Happy first day of summer. Oh, not quite hey, summer yet. Sorry, it's Thursday. Okay, so we have started well, the recording. Four. After four, okay. So we are now being recorded. Okay. Well, I open this as a as the annual meeting. I'm going to open it. Okay. Sometime. So, are we ready to ready to go? All right. We're going to call this annual meeting of the City of Manistee Housing Commission meeting. Uh, the first thing is we'll call the roll. Commissioner Goodman. Here. Commissioner Pelton. Here. Commissioner Szymanski. Here. Commissioner Fosdick. Here. All right. So first item of business on the annual meeting is election of officers. So we have a chair, president, and vice chair, vice president. And the other thing we should probably do is appoint uh, reaffirm personnel committee and finance committee. But I think after the chairs and vice chair are seated, then you can do that. And then the second item of business is to adopt the 24-25 um, meeting schedule. So first thing we need is a uh, nomination for president. I nominate Ms. Dean. Second. Second. Jenny. Second. Are there any other nominations for president? All right. We will close the nominations for president and we will have a vote. All those in favor of Steve Bosick as president for 24-25, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. The floor is now open for vice president. Nominations for vice president. I nominate Karen Goodman for vice president. I'll second. Are there any other nominations? All right. Nominations are closed. All those in favor of Karen Goodman as vice president, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we have a chair, president, and vice president. So we'll turn the meeting back over to the president. Okay, uh, we need um, to reaffirm who our finance committee is and personnel committee. Right now, the finance committee is Karen and it used to be Jim Smith. So, as vice chair, I think you can be on the committee, can you? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm happy to maybe stay on personnel and give up finance if somebody wants. I mean, it's whatever we want. I, um, I know I don't want finance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that I can be on a committee, can I? I do think you can, yes. Steve. I can. And you can be, you could be replaced if another board member is seated, if, right. if, you, if the commission desired. What about Mick and Steve on finance and Karen and I stay in person? Everybody good? All right. Good on. Do we have a... Uh, we have to have a motion on that. No, I think you can just, that's a, just a, point. a point. Okay. Okay. So finance will be Steve and Mick, personnel, Karen and Jenny. Yep. All right. Then the only thing left under the annual meeting is to adopt the 24 25 meeting schedule. I move to adopt the meeting schedule as presented. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Yes. So yeah. Steve, you close the, close the annual meeting? Yep. Entertain a motion to close the annual meeting. Yeah. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Motion carried. I would like to open, pardon me, the regular meeting of the City of Manistee Housing Commission. Um, call, call to order and roll call. All right. Commissioner Szymanski. Here. Commissioner Pelton. Here. Commissioner Goodman. Here. President Fosdick. Here. Are there any amendments to the agenda? I think there should be two. What was what was the first thing we um, I think we should move uh, the the current union negotiation. Uh, union negotiations to new business. The last item under new business and then uh, uh, to go into closed session. Okay. And then the other thing I think we should add is a formal acceptance of the resident commissioner's resignation for the record. So if we could add those two things. Okay, where would you add that? Just I would add, let's, let's, let's add under uh, H is resident commissioner and then under i is uh union negotiations under new business we have to have a motion on that yes to amend the agenda yep. okay. i'll make that motion i'll second it all in favor aye opposed motion carried Okay, public comments on agenda related items. There is a public comment period at the end also. There being none, we'll move forward to the consent agenda. Approval of minutes for May 16th, the special meeting minutes of June 6th, and the bills and disbursements for May of 2024. I make the motion that we accept that. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Second. Mm -hmm. Old business. Is that bold lock drive that? Sounds like a mystery series. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, um, so Steve and I talked about this when we were working on the agenda a little bit. Um, so I know Ron's anxious to hear what's going on with this deadbolt lot project. Um, so we're still working on it because we have to find out for sure. We were told by the um, fire department that it has to be a one motion to get out of your unit from the inside. So we're looking at a lock set that will support that, but we're not, um, we're still having the fire marshal verify if that's true because the one lock that would be less expensive um, is a two motion. Like you'd have to undo your deadbolt and then use the lever to get out. You're looking like a, space bar that opens up a door and I, I guess I'm I think it's I think it's a handle that would open the deadbolt it's too. interconnected they're all connected so they're they're more expensive oh yeah because so we have them all over our buildings yeah. yeah so that's holding up I mean there are two quotes that's in there the one is in the the first the lower quote that's in there um is for to stay with the keys but um, I know Steve is very interested in doing a card or a fob system. So that's the second quote. Um, but we're looking, we're definitely not ready to make a recommendation on this project yet, but I'm hoping at the next commission meeting we will be. Yeah. Oh, but $28,000. Yes. <laughs> these, these, these openers, I mean, I know the last one I paid was like $300. This yeah, so this would be for a hundred and this is strictly Century Terrace, which phase two would be Harbor View. Okay. Um, but um, these quotes are for 119 units in this building. We did put um, one of the deadbolts in that has that 
to say with the key for an example so that we do have that installed in this building and the fire marshal did approve that so the quote for was it 28,000 um that one actually um would be if we want to stay with the keys but if you guys clearly have this vision of using cards and fobs then we have to keep doing more work i would certainly go well, for a fob but i wouldn't go for a top what about it the keyless entry system the number you know where you just put in zero one two three yes yeah, so I believe the last time with th at the resident council meetings and such, people preferred not to have that for security reasons, for one. Um, and they are more expensive. Oh, I'm sure they're more expensive, but that would eliminate you losing your fob or your key and having to pay for a fob or a key. You have to replace the batteries. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I know that in my business, that's the preferred form that's going on right now is keyless, keyless entries. entries. Yeah. Well, the, what was brought up on that was that residents would get four digit number, yeah, and their card and or, outside. and or give that four digit number out to someone outside. Um, whether it's a keyless entry or a fob, the price is about the same. What I, what I am. Upset about is that the fire marshal has determined that we should do a one pass system, which is unheard of in, yeah. our, in any apartment. That means all apartments in this city, city are illegal. Well, it might be a new code issue too. See? Well, or a preference earth is the requirement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's certainly within his purview is to recommend something that he considers to be better. Uh, but it may not, and, and again, I think the, the question is, you know, please show me the, the requirement uh, rather than uh, a personal preference, and then we can discern. I think in assisted living facilities, that's the um, And if we can get just a deadbolt and a passage, um, lock or not lock but a passage you know where you unlock and then you open the door or Tony he's got we that. would um, say that's a two step right but that two step would save us probably half the cost it's true well I think we have to we have to get the deadlocks those are just going to be important no matter what so we need to keep moving forward kind of do a parallel let's look at the two system and then look at this other system. Bobs, I think, are like keys. People would handle them like keys, you know, put them on a key ring, stuff like that. Um, the cards can get demagnetized, that they call it. Yeah. Um, those can be a real hand. Yeah. So um, you know, I we have to move forward. We have to we have to get better security on these things. Another thing to consider too is on a key system, every time one tenant leaves and another one comes. You have to change a lot. Mm -hmm. You don't have to change the lot. Change the key. Not to get the keys back. The key back because it's a it's a restricted key. So yeah. the system, like the not, the quote that's in front of you, is for a key key system and um, discount lock and door is the only company that can make these keys. Is there any more of that safety funds out of COVID that's still lingering out there anywhere? would be one of the projects. I think, though, you're right. Let's make be thoughtful about this and make sure we do it right the first time and not do something that we regret. Instead. Whereas if we use a FOB or a card system, we just reprogram it. Yeah. Because, again, as a past yeah. property manager, I, uh, huh. there, there were times when there were no keys available. Yeah. They just left town. Yeah. Yeah, then we, we would change for sure. Well, the, the hotel industry has gotten away from keys for almost 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So there's a reason why Hyatt's and Hilton's don't use keys anymore. So, so well, it's for security. You don't, if you've got a key, I mean, I know that they're restricted. It's amazing. 
seventy three point three dollars. But okay, you can so keep, we're gonna table it. Yep. We're gonna keep doing yeah, we're gonna keep done. working on it, but just an update on where are you, we're at. Do you guys are you still keys in um your old place yeah. ever? Yeah. Still keys. Yeah, every still keys <laughs> everywhere. Although the system that we in Big Rapids we put in was a uh rekeyable system that you could change the pins on the lock. Right. Some, that's, we that's, had several sets of keys that could match up to that. Actually the key, the new key would change the pins. So, but I'm not sure that's the way to go either because that company was hard to deal with at the end and went out of business and changed hands and so. A lot of money, so we got to make sure we know. Yeah, and and with a hundred and some odd keys, there's only so many pin combinations. And I was embarrassed. I had apartments at one facility that had the same yeah. pin structures, and which led to a big problem because everyone thought everyone else could go into their apartment, which wasn't true. It's just that two by happenstance happened to be cut the same. Two different buildings, but the same facilities. Well, what, what Kevin and them has been doing with the existing key in the door, when someone moves out and they change it, they just go swap it with an input. That way, nobody knows. I had extra key one time for a guy because he forget his key, and when they it became empty. I tried it in there; it would not work, so I had to turn it in because they took an empty and changed it with that one. But you know, passage so locks are so easy to disable with a credit card or whatever to get in there and just pop them over. Oh yeah, I know. why didn't I? I can open two thirds of these. Though. But now okay. that lip where it goes in, if it had a, <laughs> you, we did them slips, you know, the metal part goes in there where it goes in the door. If you came out this way, there's no way, there's no way you could give me anything in there, but still you're leaving the key in there and you can't get in the apartment. It's a dead bolt, you, you bring the key outside the house. And if they need to change it, just change the deadbolt with an empty. Well, the nice thing about it, this is about deadbolt, is number one, you can't check a door open with a deadbolt. Um, and number two, you have to have your key to lock your door. So your key is on the outside with you. You can't lock it inside. Okay, let's move on to laundry room equipment. Is this the last time we're going to talk about this, Lori? <laughs> yes. So July 11th, we have scheduled um, to pull the old machines, clean the rooms, and install the new machines. Yeah. So there will be a transition box. So it'll transfer your funds from your old card to your new card. So you'll put your um, your current card in. And we'll give you a new card, and then the funds will be transferred. Is that the reason they have to fix the washers that are broken down there? Probably. So July 11th is the, the day. And we are going to have the large, each building will have a large washer and dryer to do blankets or larger items. But we still do ask that you take your uh, pet bedding to the laundromat for the, the larger ones. Good. So that was just a, yeah, I just wanted to update that by at last it's yep. Yep, it didn't. Um that's all that's all I have on the laundry room equipment, Steve. Okay, resolution 2024-3 approval of red bug policy. This did go through a 60-day comment period. Are there comments? No. I will make a motion that we accept resolution 2024-0. Dash zero three fed bug policy. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 First, Steve, resolution we probably should do a roll call vote. Oh, okay. Ready? Roll call vote. Commissioner Szymanski. Yes. Commissioner Pelton. Yes. Commissioner Goodman. Yes. President Fosden. Yes. Then you have work session with the city of Manistee. Has the date been set? No. I just wanted to keep that on there so we can keep moving forward. What is your schedule? Would September be? I think we should get through summer yes. and try it maybe. And then the question is, 
do we try to get with them before city council meeting or would it be better to come after one of our housing commission meetings and come here? You've been on both. Well, it, again, I think the work session policy used to be where it was the the uh, second Tuesday, but I think that's now I think only when they have something specific. Uh, my suggestion would just check with the city and, and see uh, which what preference the city council would have. I, my guess is they would probably prefer to be here. I'd love for them to come here. Um, I think that. Like, you know, we're asking, but we would really love to have you come be at the building. Yeah, yeah. Let's maybe sit in this yeah. room right yeah. here or harbor view, either one. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, you may want to wait then until after November when you have a new city council. Just saying. Well, we're just starting the conversation, yeah. though. We're not making any right. decisions. So, how many people are running this? Two or three. Oh, was, no, I think there was both. Um, both of them. My district and where, where else? Uh, fifth district. Oh, okay. There's three. Yeah. There's three yeah. running, and I believe all of them are contested this time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. That's right. September at the earliest to me. Okay. For me. I think that's a good start point. At least to have a conversation. Check right. council changes. Right. You know, at least we'll have a baseline and sure. we can kind of. And then, then uh, yeah. November, December, or January have a second one. Yeah, maybe then we could go to a city council meeting. Yeah. And, but I think we need. So. My thought is we need to be ready from about a year from now to be ready for an application. So there's some there's a lot of work to be done within that time frame. So having some consensus a lot sooner than that is will be very beneficial on where we want to go. Yeah. I don't know if the audience is understanding what we're talking about. So we're talking about our our scattered site plans and and potentially building new new units in that plan. I think that's where we're kind of hearing the conversation too. Everything in September. We'll, yes. we'll try for it. And maybe it could be, would you say if we said we do a nine o'clock meeting and had a 10 o'clock or a 11 o'clock, maybe we could have lunch, we could have some lunch brought in if it goes beyond and just have a lunch after. You may want to check though. I don't typically the city council only meets in the evening. They don't meet during the day. Yeah. No, I mean. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, at least three. Well, let's It'd be nice to do it before we get into the dark phase. So yeah. we can do a tour around it. Let's well, let's I'll touch base with Bill yeah, and to see him. and have him touch base with the council. Oh, fine too. Yeah. What's that, Karen? Five o'clock is fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Now we're into new business. Huntington Bank Resolution 2024-4. I will make the motion that we accept the resolution um, 2024-4 for Huntington Bay. And that is what, the signatures? Yes, that is to remove um, two of the previous commissioners and add Mick and myself onto the account. I second. Okay, Who made the motion? Okay. Who made the motion? Karen. Karen, okay. Karen and Jenny. Commissioner Szymanski. Yes. Commissioner Pelton. Yes. Commissioner Goodman. Yes. President Fosdick. Yes. Uh, the West Shore Bank signature card authorization. Is that not a resolution? No. Um, Huntington actually provided me with that resolution, but West Shore, <laughs> we just have to approve um, to add the board. They just want to see the minutes after we approve the minutes. Yeah. So you would just um, make a motion to add the four commissioners. Um, and then when we have our new resident commissioner, um, we would have to add that person too. And we're going to add you also. And myself. Motion for West Shore Bank signature card authorization to add the four current commissioners and Lori. Second. Second. Me. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
portion period. Resident commissioner qualifications. All right, I'll, I'll try to just give you an update on this. So in there is this, the city uh, provided us with their application. It's our job to, to um, provide this to the residents or, or solicit but the question is, and I put a, I put a, oh, Jeff, oh, Lord, you did have that in the agenda. Jeff has oh, it. it's in there. So you saw the letter. I want to talk about that a little bit. Well, not the most, the agendas went out before we received it. the, okay. Yeah, so I put Jeff's response in there. Well, um, I could make this kind of story. I think what we should do is solicit residents from both Century Terrace and Harbor View along with the scattered sites, the scattered sites taken precedent over CTHB. And then if nothing can come of that whole collaboration, then the city is free to elect one from. It could come town. from anywhere in the city. Yeah, it could come it from anywhere. Actually anywhere in the town. Yeah. Well, not if it's a city. Yeah, there's a waiver under public act if you're under 250 units and you have no interest from a resident, then it can be a general appointment. So the question is, can the resident commissioner be a resident of Harborview and Century Terrace? Jeff's opinion is no, and that's HUD's opinion because it's not directly federally assisted. That's why we would do precedent to some no, of the scattered No, I, I agree, I agree. And then the general appointment could certainly be from a resident from Century Terrace and Harbor View, just like Steve. And, and they could have preference. So yeah. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's what, a 60 day period that we have to hold this open? Yeah. I don't want to have to open it for two 60 day periods. Yeah. I'd like to give a resident commissioner as soon as we can. I, I think that makes a lot of sense to, to go that way. Do we want to establish a committee? It's up to the city. I mean, we. The applications come in, but it to us, and know. then we send them to the yeah. okay, because we used to have two residents that interviewed the resident commissioner. No, well, it, yeah, in Big Rapids, we would the city wanted us to make the recommendation to vet the resident, but I don't think that's the case here. So, if the it, city were to ask us, we'd be happy yeah. to do it. Okay, but it's their choice. It's their certainly yeah. their choice. Yeah. So, so our approach is we're gonna we're gonna do all. 212 units. Right, right. Well, two, yeah, so we have 212 here. Or no, we have, well, we have 167 here and, 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 and then 47. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we're going to send it to everybody, but we're going to note to the city that these people qualify under public act. These residents qualify under the public act. These don't, but these could be made as a general appointment. I think it's a good idea to keep a resident, no matter who it is, on the board. I think it's good to have their input. It's valuable. Or the other thing, you know, Jeff brought that up in his email was maybe not have a resident commissioner, which would be nice, but if we can't find one, have a, a honorary resident commissioner yeah. that sits with the residents but has no vote. And, and we kind of have that as the resident council too, see, you know, that they've okay. developed. So, but I think that's a good thought. No question. Okay, anything else on the resident commissioner qualifications? Nope. Trampolines, pools, and fire pits at scattered sites. So um, we do have the recommendation from the insurance company. So um, I would like to add to the house rules um, that um, trampolines, fire pits, and then Pools, that's one thing I did want to discuss with you. Currently, I believe it's, um, you cannot have more than, it's like five gallon pool. <laughs> Basically a little kiddie pool. A kiddie, uh, waiting. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I just wanted to put it out there for discussion. What? Yeah, I want three, I'm sorry. Three. So um, I know what we did was we did allow a little bit larger pools, um, not the the huge ones, but you know they were a little bit larger, more than five gallons. Um, but you did have to empty them every evening. 
paying for the water. Yeah, that's just a safety feature. So we do have an excess utility charge if we go over. Kid doesn't yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly why. And and also the water gets stagnant. Obviously, yeah. it's a kiddie pool, yeah. so you don't want the water being there for days. Right. So that's how it's we. Not chlorine. It was worded. Kid, you could yeah, water. you that's could have a kiddie pool. Do we know what the the you know a, a six foot kiddie pool? How many gallons that would be? A standard six foot kiddie pool. That's more than five gallons. I know, but I don't. But I don't know. Is it twenty? I, I we have any. So we do excess uh, water fee if you're over a certain amount of um, water. So the resident would have to pay for it if they went over. Do we have if it's a lot metered? Of pools, standard size. We do have people that want to actually put up the big ones. Yeah. So that's why I need yeah. to be able to. I need to um, because. Remember, uh, this was rural development, but I had to tell a tenant to take out a water feature in her backyard that had like a four foot kiddie pool because it wasn't wasn't allowed. It wasn't even a pool; it was just a water feature. So do we have a splash park in Manistee. We do not. We're they're looking at building one, but it doesn't. Exist. We have a nice beach. But yeah, we got more nice beach. Yeah. Got a lot of nice beach. Yeah, I think Manistee in one article I saw was first street beach was ranked one number of the best in the whole state. Number of one yeah. in the state. Yeah. yeah. But I do want to get your support on which direction you would like me to go because I do have to enforce these rules and which is another thing. It's um, a kiddie pool. If they recommend not exceeding twelve inches can hold over two hundred and fifty gallons of water. That's a lot of water. Yeah, that's too big. So that's like the that's a kiddie pool. No, that's it would not be that big. That's, that's it, it would be easier to say just no, then we don't have right. to kiddie which but, plastic portable pool. Like this yeah. this is the one that's showing I, a little kiddie pool up to 250 gallons of water. But I know I, I've got a doggy pool. <laughs> a lot of yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> I hate to think that people can't have a little pool. I know it's dog. What about less kid. than um, 50 gallons? 50 gallons. What, six feet wide or less? That's a kiddie pool. So, how many gallons? Well, it would just be the diameter of yeah, it. Just the diameter. Not to exceed six foot in diameter. Yeah. And, and dump it every evening. Yeah. You have to dump it. Yeah. I think it would. Just as easy to say no pool. It would be easier, but then. But that's tough when you've got little kids. Got little well, kid, well, yeah. I understand that, but to, to, to dump it every evening and refill it every day. Water well, they can do it every day, but when they do do it, when they do fill it up, they need to dump yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Like grass And food. you're supposed to do that with a kitty pool. That's that's just basic sanitation. Maybe when you send out the notice, you could say, we, you know, the. The commission was difficult to make this decision to allow it, so please be sure to follow the rules so it doesn't affect everybody. And a hard no on the trampolines and the fire pits. Correct. Yeah, unfortunately. Now, the one, just a suggestion, you know, is is kind of managing um, the situation. Is talk to the newspaper about publishing the article that we read about the trampolines, how dangerous they are. And put that in the newspaper so that people understand we're just not making this as an arbitrary rule because a couple of people happen. We're doing it because they're deemed unsafe and our insurance companies don't want them. But I think that if a good public safety article in the newspaper would certainly go a long way to placating um, citizens that may be upset. That's a good idea, Ben. And I'm sure that they would. We just gave it that info, and I, I was surprised. I didn't realize that there were that many uh, fatalities and accidents associated with trampolines. I knew that there was a danger to them, but I didn't realize that it was a million accidents a year. Well, I know our chiropractor said that's where most of her business comes from. 
Karen or Mick, do you know most cities have a ban on open fire? I mean, we do not. You don't have a ban. Okay. We allow, however, the the in order to be, we don't have any sites that are really compliant with the way, or if you read how it, it's supposed to be uh, something like uh, 20 feet away from any structure. So, Enclosed. yeah, and you can't, so it, and it has, okay. to, you know, it has to be a ring. It has to have a cover. There are stipulations on it. So are the ones at the beach that yeah. way? Yes. Yeah. 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 We definitely don't want fire pits at our sites no. for sure yeah you you run into and they have to you know the the ones like the city have are, are basically permanent yeah. now, if we that would be an option if we were redoing the sites to build in green, one green that's right it, as part of our green space that would be great yeah. however yeah individual fire pits uh there is a significant right, amount of sort of right next to the splash Splash off, splash pad. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Put that down in our notes yeah. for the rent. But anyways, <laughs> I, the uh, the fire pits have have significant amount of criteria to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else on that? No. Pet policies, scatter sites, removed. So currently, the policy charges a annual $150 fee to have a pet. So I wanted to Boy, that's a cash dollar. Just discuss that. Mm -hmm. We have not been charging that. So I just wanted to make sure if we're not going to do it, that we take it out of the policy. We should be enforcing it. So it's $150 a year to have a pet. So mainly what people do is they go through the reasonable accommodation and then get an emotional support animal. And then you cannot, they do not have to follow the pet policy if it's an emotional support animal. And that's fine. But I would keep it. Well, that's not a service dog. That's an emotional support dog. There's a big difference. Yeah, but it's not a pet. An emotional support dog is different than a service dog. There are different rules. But neither one of them are considered pets. And a, a service dog is not considered a pet. It's right. a working animal. Not the emotional support dog or cat or animal snake or whatever. Well, do we allow do we allow things other than cats and dogs? Yes. Turtles and snakes. Yeah, and I would. So not snakes. Yeah, so I would like to I want to re I would like to bring back a different pet policy and I would like to bring an emotional support because right now currently we have no policy to enforce when it comes to emotional support and service animals so right. i would like to bring two policies back to you but i kind of wanted to yeah. just discuss it to kind of get your ideas on what items you would like to Three see parts. in that policy one if you have an animal there will be a charge i have had places in which i didn't do that and boy did i oh. A lot of money, but you know. All right. How about deposits? You could do it as that. You could do it as a deposit, and it'll be held. Well, but the only problem with that is this. you have to be careful that you cannot. So, depending on what a person, so if a person's rent is two hundred dollars a month, you cannot collect more than one and a half months' rent between deposits, which would be your security deposit and your pet deposit. So you have to be careful that you're not violating the Michigan. Yeah. Law. So that's the only problem if we do collect a security deposit. Well, now hold on. There, there, that is a subsidized rent. But the real rent is the tenant's portion and HUD's portion. Nope. Nope. They don't consider that? Nope. Okay. Nope. No, no I, I think to pet, having a pet fee is reasonable. I mean, yes. there, every hotel charges. You know, or most hotels. Yeah, what is a reasonable fee? fee? I think the 150 is reasonable. I don't think it's, um, you know, if you're, if you just think about, you know, the potential damage to a pet, um, you know, cat scratch, dogs bite. Yeah, which, which 75% of the pets that are present are 
emotional support animals or service. I guess so. That, those would not be. They would be exalus, which is okay. I, right. I, what I'm saying is, you have to have two different policies here. These yeah. are two different types of animals. One is a working animal. The yeah. other is a support animal. They are very different. The rules for the working animal are very specific, and they have changed because I had to redo our policy. The support animals, which I have, I love them. You have to understand that they still are a pet who provides emotional support. You have to be very clear about these two different types. Don't throw them in the same categories because they are not. They're yeah. not the same. And an emotional support animal that um, you have to have a doctor slip typically. And yeah. I think what Lori's trying to say is I think though they're Either way, Karen, they're both exempted from deposits and fees. I think that's by by our regulation. Not by our regulation. See, we that's the way we've always fair housing. That yeah, was a fair housing issue. Right. So, so that's why we eliminated fees because we didn't feel it was fair for the people playing by the rules that had a pet and paid the the fee. And then some people took the route of getting an emotional support animal to circumvent the requirements in our policy. So, so that I think that's what we're getting. Not, not, not. Or do we? We don't know for sure. Though. Well, let let us double check. Then. And and I and I, I still think it's important because first of all, it gives you an opportunity to know that there's pets in your facilities. Yep. And then and then you can. You can have, you know, a policy of waiving with the appropriate documentation, depending whether or not you want to separate one from the other. But it, you should have every pet should be registered. Yeah. That's a way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, and then whether or not the fee is charged. Uh, you know, again, it's a pet. It's a pet. If it's a working animal. You, you cannot discriminate as far as a emotional support animal, but you can enforce the cleanup and maintenance. Yeah, for sure. Animal. There's no question. Yep. No question. So, yeah, so we just had um, some folks request their child um, has some disabilities and they would like a kitten for the child as an emotional support animal. So they completed the reasonable accommodation. We have our form goes to the doctor. They fill it out. They say, yes, the child could benefit from having a kitten. So then they that's not considered a pet any longer, that would be under the emotional support animal policy. So there'd be no fee and no um, Okay, so it, it, uh, it sounds like you're saying most of the people have support animals and service animals, so no fees are being applied. Right, that, that, that's what we're saying. Well, there are a few that yeah. I need to start charging that is actually fair? register. That is fair. I think that's what we're coming back to. You know, it's like, well, I, I have my dog and I didn't register it, but I'm paying and Jane go across it was smart enough to register it and but, they're not so I, but they you know, can always go they could always follow that same well, process and procedure though what you're going to do is make people go to a doctor and get a yeah. yeah which i which i, I think is abusing the system yeah. because as far as a pet i don't have a problem with a deposit or i think all back but i don't want a yearly a one a one-time fee i think is more fair than an an annual ongoing sure. i think I, that's I, the I that's the point we were trying to make too in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is that I have absolutely no problem with animals. We have not been in this place or the other and have not enforced regulating these animals and people have pushed the envelope too far. Living in a congregate facility, you have to always remember your neighbors, your neighbors' animals, everybody else. And so it's going to be important that people care for their animal we are not dog sitters we are not daycares we are not any of that stuff and you have to have control of your animal because if your animal gets out of control i have been mauled by a dog and then it's a horrible 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 experience so control is important it may be your emotional support dog but if it goes out of control 
you, you can't, we can't endanger other people or other animals. So I think this is going to be important that we all know we love our animals, we want our animals, so we have to work with them to keep them protected. So in my rental business, which I do a lot, I require deposit as I feel it encourages them that they'll get the money back. If they leave the property in the condition they found it. And I do think that it is definitely a benefit to our residents that we allow pets. They have to understand there's a lot of units that don't allow pets across the board now. I mean, you can $1,200 apartments, they don't allow pets. So I think maybe there should be an application fee because the staff has to spend time on this. And then maybe if we can do a deposit rather than a fee. So it says, you don't get this, this is specific, other than a security deposit, this is a pet deposit. So there's no scratches on the door, there's no stains on the flooring. That's an encouragement that maybe you're never gonna move out. Hopefully they'll just stay here. But if you're gonna move out, that you've left the place in the condition you found it. It's the cash in your pocket. Yeah. Yes. Some of us that moved in six years and before, I paid a $150 deposit for there. Okay. So it is. So it's somewhere. So yeah. a deposit that you can get back if you move if out. you move out, you can yeah. get it back. Yeah. For the privilege, I look. It's a privilege to be able to have a pet in a rental unit. I, it's and I don't know if you're all aware, but in out in the world, it's less and less an ability to have a pet in a unit. Lots of landlords just don't want to deal with it. So I think it's great that our staff wants to oversee this and handle this. But for the paperwork alone, I'd even say $25 application fee and then a deposit or something because it takes up a lot of time. And you know how hard these guys are working to keep everything good for you. So, And do we want both Oops. properties yeah. to have the same policy? Oh, yeah. I think everybody. Yeah, we, we have just one policy. Yeah. We'll just... we'll bring back. We need to. We need to... Guys, yeah. That's why I just kind of wanted to yeah. get your yeah. take on it so that when I do start creating it, I kind of know what direction you would like to go yeah uh, i'm going to keep pets but yes. we need to control it yeah and just make sure that it's it's clean you know people pick up after their animals or empty their kitty boxes and all that stuff yeah and the veterinary record that and your pets, pets yeah yeah, yeah. And you have a dog that's been, well you have to see their license right yeah, we have all that now. That's all that's all in the current policies. We just have to have time to enforce it. Yep. Dog gaming is easier to replace with a cat. This is all over the inside of the apartment. You can never get that out. Yes, you can. So in the pet policy, you want to have a subject title responsible privilege, not it. Take another We're gonna bring back some okay. drafts. Yeah, that's, yeah. good language. Yeah. that's good language, yeah. Responsible pet ownership, responsible yeah. privilege. Thank you. Now we'll segue right into Laurie, your smoking policy. As a, I mean, so, a so this is strictly for <laughs> scattered sites. I think the, for Here. Century Terrace and Harbor View, um, I think the, the three designated smoking areas are going well. Um, I do need to know if you want me to start quoting any shelters, but I think at this time we decided we're not going to. Like shelters by fall. Definitely. You you do want me to propose? Okay. I, I I think it's nice, even if we put up a little purple of something or something. I think you know, we're going to invite a lot of animals and homeless and everything else. And I'm not saying a big, huge building or anything. Just something with a little roof over it. Something small. You can see right through it. Yeah, like the bus. The city, the bus where you sit. Has a glass. Oh yeah, the, yeah. But four posts in a row. How just, about we just have a big party if they all quit smoking? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, what the baseball team down at the um, first street put up with the uh, canvas that the, the, what the city uses now, mm -hmm. just even a, 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 a sale. Just, you know, three posts and a sale. Right. That would be. What location would we put it in? Uh, we have something in the middle here. But you can't get yeah. a two by chair. That's a gravel. Yeah. We'd have to either put it in this parking lot or the other parking lot. Or is that what the uh, 
Well, people do know what's We you can see the stripe around there. I mean, I mean, that's easy to put a sail yeah, up there. Yeah. I mean, my. And they're and they're reasonable. They're they're not outrageously expensive. Yeah, we can put if we if they're reasonable and that that we'll do the same on the other side. So one mm -hmm. on each side. Okay, and I'm a smoker, but are we doing this so? What, so they're comfortable while they're smoking a cigarette? Well, so they're out of the weather and stuff. I mean, I'm not. They're not out of the weather. Not if you're putting tights on it. I don't have big, I don't have big sun beating down on me and stuff. Mm -hmm. so see, see. They have the sun on level over there. Like sometimes when they're seating, there's no seating and all I have is my walker. I can't use it because I'll go down the hill over the river. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if there's any way to flatten that out a little bit. What, right up here? Yeah. Oh, in the middle. Oh, yeah, in the middle? Talking about oh, are you guys, I think you're talking about here. two different places. Yeah. yeah. Andrea's talking about up here. I'm talking about over here. There's no way to think some of this down that. It's already tarby. It's already tarby. But there is a spot 25 feet from the building where we could potentially excavate and install a shelter. Got a, got a big blue shelter just that that's all right. Like size wise, like the roof. size yeah. would be. We could do a six by four. I mean, just enough yeah. for a bench. Not a building yeah. Taj Mahal. Hey, you guys have paid this metal part. I'd here. go probably. You want at least twelve by twelve. I would say. And and normally the sale ones are three posts. They they yeah. work on a triangle. Yeah, twelve. 12. Ten foot each. Ideally, the site would be this gravel parking lot if we could pave a spot or or at least. So at least we know because I wasn't sure how the full board felt. And that would be accessible for both buildings. If we could concrete a little in a in sidewalk to it or something. Where where are we talking? It's um right, right back where where inside the building. Oh, where they didn't pave, they graveled it. Oh. But just yeah, remember, right in there. In there. anything that we do, we have to maintain. We have to make sure it's accessible and right. it would be winter. William. Yeah, that would be more accessible. Well, than, let's look into that then. Yeah. Okay. It so that's actually, close. I'm glad we talked about that, but that's not why I had it on the agenda. But I'm glad that we talked about that. So the reason I, so this is um, the public housing scattered site. Yeah. yeah. The scattered site policy. So. Have ever been. Have they ever been controlled on smoking in their units? Um, well, I'm trying. So when I just did the recent inspections, I did send out several lease violations. Um, so what do you think about if they were 25 feet away from all buildings? So it wouldn't be a designated area because we have so many different sites. Um, but if we approved that you can smoke on our property, on the scattered site properties, if you are 25 feet from all buildings. I think the scattered site so you can't get 25 feet yeah. from all buildings. You're including the sheds. Well, then you'll have to go farther than 25 right. feet. So, so you can't, right? So you're going to have to go, to, so either then you go back out to the road or wherever. But a lot of the properties, they do have large yards, but they're smoking in front on the sidewalk. Because they can't there's smoke no on the property. Either. There's no back. No. Don't. No. So typically, if, if and again, I, it's been a while, but mm -hmm. our, our government policy for smoking was 20 feet from an exit or open window. And HUD is 25. 25. And, well, you and again, it window. wasn't from a building. It was from the door or, or a, you know, open window. Yeah, so I could pull it out of the federal regulations, but I wanted to make sure that you were okay with them smoking on our property as long as they are 25 feet from the yeah. building. Right now it said you have to be off property. Yeah. So I just wanted your approval to come back to you with a new policy yeah. that states the the verbiage from the federal regulation with the 25 feet. Okay. And when we get ahead, we could start offering smoking cessation. Well, we offer those now. Well, As I meet with people event. too, I, yeah, people are not interested in them. Grace, 
put on. Um, so we had we um, put in the newsletter. We had Grace from the health department provided one. We invited residents to come. It's, um, but I can I sh can certainly work on getting another one set up. But it's just we just had a hard time getting attendance. Well, you have to do it several times. People can't remember or, you know, helps your team. Yeah, and she's great to work with, so I know she'll be willing to come again. Lori, what is that, 24 CFR? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I just wanted to, those are policies I've been um, wanting to work on, and I just wanted to um, find out from the board what direction they'd like to go on those policies. So that was just for review. So thank you. Thank you, Laura. So when okay. you put it in there, maybe remind the residents that you do have a cessation. Yeah, it's in there now. Or I guess repeat, repetition. Repetition. I can, the newsletter might be yeah. more effective. Okay, SEAL, Solutions for Energy Efficient Logistics. Yes. So everything on this list um, that says yes, it's well, if you look at the the back second page, the bottom, so it looks like we should be approved for 16 water heaters, 18 boilers, and 11 furnaces, um, totaling $216,588, which will be paid by SEALs. So all the heating and water heater equipment and all the scattered sites um, will be upgraded. That's, that is amazing. Thank you. Um, thank you. Custom sheet metal will be performing the work. And at this point, it should not cost the Housing Commission any funds unless they find something that's not covered under the grant when they're doing this, then there may be. Okay, I have a question. Is any of this going to be usable? I'll see now. Well, we'd salvage it certainly with this new equipment. And you know, furnaces, it would be nice if we could come mini splits so that we can salvage them. Well, I, I miss, well this boilers. is through the gas company. Yeah, so they're, they're not gonna per yeah. they're not gonna give boilers. us mini splits. Yeah, you take the boiler out and put a mini split in. Yeah. But they're not gonna fund that because this is the gas. This company. is through DT. Okay. But, but they speaking don't want of mini splits, I am still, I have not received a no on that yet. So we're still working on getting mini splits in this building, Steve. And the new grants haven't been assigned yet. Yeah. They're coming. Well, we might be able to get on some current funds. They're working together and we've had, um, we have to get the, we have to get the building, the mechanical and the electrical inspectors all on board once they have the funding in place. Because it's a big project. Oh, yeah. It'd be 130 some mini splits on this building. On the some would be on the roof, some would be in the front of the unit, some would be on the yes. So they all have to have their own condenser. No, it's a it's a it's a process. But you can put three units in it. Oh, so like a two bedroom would have three units inside. It'd have a unit in each bedroom and one in the living room, and one unit can control three. Well, yeah. I know people that have houses with put just one split, and it works to cool their home. They're probably larger than the ones that we're proposing. These are smaller units. I'm saying it's units, but but and you, yeah, you can't share between units because of the controlling the temperature. No, I know, but I mean, like I'm thinking one unit per apartment instead of three units. In it is one so, unit. It is one unit per apartment. One condenser and three fans. Oh, okay. yeah, these these are the actual these are just fans. The yeah. condenser is the little unit right outside yeah. the window yeah. there. So so this these they won't have, they're so you know it'd be something like it'd be similar to looking like this. So they could have each apartment would have two of the, so you have one in your living room, one in your bedroom. And the so outside condenser would control that. There is some work that they're gonna leave for us to do if it does get approved, some drywall work that is not included and in, I did try and get them. I said, well, can you just add on someone to come behind you guys and clean up and get that approved at the same time? So I'm, I'm still, I haven't given up on that yet, but it could be up to our staff to go back and repair any drywall damage. And we get a sub Yeah, and remember that's only this building too, because this is electric heat, the other the, the other building we're not talking about. Yeah, it's not Harborview. It's not Harborview. 
Okay, uh, now H is resident commissioner. You want it on the agenda? Well, I think we should just formally uh, acknowledge the, oh. the board should formally acknowledge the res the resignation, which was all. Do you want to put that in the form of a motion or a resolution? No, just, uh, I think just a statement, just acknowledge that, that yeah, you acknowledge it. Yep. We, yep. we thank James Taylor for his service. And, um, he understand his reasons that he needed to remove himself from the housing commission. Thank and acknowledge. Yes. And I, as union negotiations post session, I want to move that. Yeah, I was just going to say um, right after public comments. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. That way, no one has. Everyone doesn't have to go out. Come back here. Yeah. Ten minutes. Okay. So for now, no presentation or discussion. Reports and communications. Of operations manager and executive director. So I just wanted to touch on one thing. I'm working on developing a Harborview Century Terrace comprehensive budget. Which with what was done by BDO, they started it and didn't finish it. So, uh, so, you know, we switched to KMG new accountants, so they have a baseline to start. So I just wanted you to know that you'll see that at the next meeting, but it was interesting because I started looking at our electrical consumption. It's a, and it's a lot and it's because of the electric baseboard heat in these units. That we That's why these mini splits are so easy here. Well, exactly. And you know, and it's it's um I think it's a shame that we didn't tackle that when we had the opportunity to well, the water that. Up, was yeah. yeah, so no, exactly. But but it's like it's like a hundred thousand dollars a year. And typically what I see in any uh housing projects is water and sewer costs are the greatest costs, not not Typically, electrical costs, and I can't believe electrical is more than the water sewer here. Yeah, the city of it's five times, six times as much. The, those baseboard heaters are very inefficient, yeah. and you know, and I know we replaced them too, but that technology hasn't increased. That's just a heating cost. Yeah, and the so. splits going the splits are going to be dual, right? Heat and cooling. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yes. So that leaves the old units sitting there. Oh, that's different. So they will still be in the at this time. I did say, is there any chance you could yeah, include we removal of them? We can remove. I mean, yeah, it's not we have so to that's do. another yeah. item that and we would have true. to do ourselves. So yeah, there's an apartment. Yeah, I'm disconnected. It's easy. Yeah. You cap the wires off right. out of the right. breakers. Yep. And, yep. So and you just, like I said, in the interim, once you get them, you just disconnect yep. the breakers yep. so that they don't function anymore. Yeah, disconnect. But, but the new so they would do that they just wouldn't remove them we just need to make sure that we the mini splits that we get are low temperature mini splits yep. there are two different yep. systems and the others wouldn't be good enough i don't think for our winter climate yep the the good ones today make i know are rated down to like minus 25 yes and yes. then then they have backup heating in there in case the temperature for extended periods and I know by the lake short here, I don't think we get extended periods of that extreme. But in the do have to have stamp yeah. drawings on this whole project. Yeah. Uh, very seldom is a good one. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. The the lake really tempers it here compared to thirty miles inland. I think the residents will the the heat and air conditioning will make a big difference right. for residents here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no more installing the window shakers. So it'll be anyway, that's I just wanted to bring that up. So, we're else, so um, we were contacted by the city regarding the city rental inspections. So it's so they charge ninety dollars per rental unit for a three year certificate. So we were able to negotiate. They will inspect fifteen percent of our units. And both and all three properties. Yeah. So we actually completed. So this year they're doing this side of the bridge. Yeah. So we we uh, last week, within the last two weeks, we completed 
everything they wanted to see. Okay. So. Albert, they got everything just the ones they looked at. Yeah. Correct. So we did the three DVG homes. So we did pay on each of those. Um, and then um, we did, so it costs, so yeah, it's over. So um, it'll be a while before they do the scattered sites, but our scattered sites will be inspected by HUD on, I believe it's July 17th. So they will receive the inspection then, but um, so $90 for each DVG home. This building, let's see, Harborview was 540 and for Century Terrace, $1,080. So those are complete. Um, minor um, violations. Um, but I am working with um, Jerry Blue, the building inspector, um, and um, a couple items that he found um, in the DVG homes. New smoke, we need to upgrade the smoke detectors. Um, in this building, there were some unsanitary conditions um, and some um, residents had too many boxes um, stacked up combustibles. So I am working with the residents to um, correct those violations. Yes. So people know that they have, if we, well, yeah. The units aren't sprinkled, I don't think, Karen. The whole entire no, no, I think just the, um, Oh, just the um, boiler room. Well, yeah, just the mechanical okay. rooms. So if we can just back up to this rental inspection. So that was a call from the city. Typically, I've been involved in a couple development of rental inspections. And we haven't been exempted. And I don't think Manistee's ordinance addresses us. But they had inspected in the past. And for some reason, we got lost in the loop. I think from a public relations standpoint, it's good that we're not treated differently in the community. And it's good. It probably would have been good if they would have been inspected the last 10 years. So um, so I think there's some value in that. And I think that's some oversight that's good to have. Um, but agreed that it's only a percentage. So and, and maybe we need to. to codify that in the ordinance too. Yeah. If I know in Big Rapids, we did 10% in Everett, we're doing 20%. So. Yeah. Yeah. Get that. Yeah. It's good oversight. Yeah. But let's ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want to, we don't want to be sending taxpayer money to other taxpaying jurisdictions unnecessarily. Right. And in this case, I think the fee is more than reasonable. Yeah. You're, you're basically just covering time. Yeah, exactly. I think in uh, Everett, the fee is $125, and that's covering just the building inspector's time, a contractual building inspector. I know when I ran Lakeview, 40 apartments, every one of them had to be inspected every three years. Yeah. They would not let one of them. And if someone wasn't there, they came back the next day until they finally were there. We are an entity of city. Yeah. And we do get inspected by HUD, so that's the argument that, yeah. you know, yeah. the for some so less fantastic what so I just have two more things. Okay. Um, the transition from um, Yardy to one site, uh, we are still moving forward with that. It's taking longer than expected. Um, actually, um, we are close today for training. So, and then all next week we will be training. It. We haven't figured out the hours for next week yet, but we will have limited hours next week because we will be continuing training. And then, so hopefully by the end of next week, we will be up and running again. Now who's doing the training, one site or KMG? KMG. Okay. And the other thing is um, I am preparing to make an employment offer for an administrative assistant. So we're hoping to have that position filled um, by the end of next week also. And that's all I have. Okay. Committee reports, finance committee, any report? No. For your last. No. Personnel committee, our right. status leading negotiations. We're going to go into full session on that. Is there anything else in the personnel committee? No. Commissioner reports, start with you, Karen. Nothing. Uh -huh. Um, I did notice 
a few window treatments that are not allowed. Just um, when I send a reminder out to everybody, but people in the community are noticing how nice everything is here. So we want to keep it looking really nice. So we had a motion two meetings ago, no longer sheets, bedding, yep. weird things in the windows. You've got blinds, you've got curtains. Just a reminder. Yeah, the pol the 60 day comment period on the window covering policy, I believe is July 17th. So at the July meeting, we will adopt that policy. So I do have some, I will have something to enforce. But meantime, I have been trying to verbally request that they honor Remove that the policy. T shirts from the window. <laughs> <laughs> Just the comment. Yep. Otherwise, everything is going good here, huh? I like all the people that are coming to the meetings. You're going to have a chance in a minute to talk to them. I'm done. Nothing new for me. Nothing new for me. I, I'm still amazed that she talked the city down to 10, 15% of the units. Yeah, but that's all again. I think they want to park. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think they want to start. I think yeah, we had conversations about yeah, that. Yeah, we are in a relationship that's been very different, you know, much better than it's probably ever. I think what happened is they noticed that nobody was inspecting that they'd done previously. And so the city manager called me and we talked through yeah. this whole situation. Yeah. They had received communications underneath that. It says financial reports April of 2024. Yeah, so it's about a break even month. Pretty good. Goodness. Yeah. Even's better. Than yeah. Yeah. Okay, vacancy report, Lawrence. Not very proud of this report, but I'm working very hard on it. Um so as of today, we have 12. So the there we did at least one since I printed this report. So do, do we still have a waiting list you're going through? Yes, but I did reach out um, to make sure that um, I renewed our ad in the advocate for openings. Um, once we have the administrative assistant on board, it's been great having Lisa on board. She's um, really helped me um, lease up the units that we have leased up. Um, with the tax credit layer dealing with KMG, they do require a whole nother set of documents than what we have been working with. So um, it's it's a lot of paperwork to get one application approved. Um, but um, Lisa's doing a great job. Cindy's doing a great job helping us run. So both girls are running um, applications. We have the applications. It's just we're still having a hard time find the time to process them. So um, hopefully, like I know I've been saying this every month, but we also have been enforcing a lot of the the rules. So people have been also moving out that um, don't it's, like. Yeah, it, again, we live in a large congregate facility here and you have to be very aware of your neighbors and others within the building. And that doesn't always fit for some people. You know, they come to realize that, oh no, I, you know, I need to have privacy. You know, what I do affects other people. So oh, I, I get it. I know that we've had a real transition and people exiting, but you know, they might realize that if this just isn't the right kind of living. Not everybody can live in, in apartments. <laughs> I think a lot of them that have exited didn't want to exit the last uh, I think it's a, a there's, combination. There's some of that. Yeah. yeah. We will get there. But yeah. if people ask us, like, you know, I'm always calling you, people should continue to apply. Yeah. Right? There's not too many people on the waiting yeah. list. Yeah, sites have long waiting lists, but for Century Terrace, um, we do have some of it long oh, availability. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I did forget to mention if you read. The, or actually the newsletter, if you don't care if I skip on to that. No. Um, well, we did have the dogs here. Okay. And there were only 10 apartments that 
um, we're currently um, treating for uh, bed bugs. So that's definitely gaining there, and they're not bad infestations. They're minor infestations. We're making, but we did we did inspect all 167 units. So, so, so that's less than their normal average. They said. Oh, that's good news. We put that in the paper so everybody knows that we're working hard on bed bugs. I have a question on vacancies, Lori. Yes. Um, I said I would never be critical of the amount of vacancies we have as long as you continue to take people that make other people feel unsafe, unloved here. Leave. But I noticed we've got 12 two high rises, but only two are ready. Are these just, are these apartments well, as I have, available? No, but um, as we have approved applicants, we are able to get them ready right away. So I have been using, so we have the cleaning service now, um, and they actually have been prepping units for me for, I think they charged me $95 for the last unit they prepped. So I don't have a problem getting them ready once I have an approved. The hard part is getting the person through the screening process and then getting them through the compliance. So once all that paperwork's done, so the units not being ready is not the reason that they're not filled. Newsletters. <clears throat> newsletters. You already went through the newsletter or did resident council meeting minutes? Either or. Deb, did you have a report from resident council meeting? Well, kind of, sort of, because all the residents are coming and I'm going to let them speak. Oh, at public comments. Okay. Very good. Okay, well, then that opens it up to public comment. Go ahead, your name? Jim Zimmerman, 319. Now, you talk about privacy in this building. Once in the last year, I've had staff members come up, knock on my door once, and let himself in. I didn't have time to get off my couch to the door. Is that acceptable for you? No. Why, it's not acceptable Why were they me. there, James? Huh? Why were they there? Well, they had a scheduled appointment for that day. But they come up, knock on a door once, and then let themselves in. I could have been on a toilet. I could have been in a shower. I could have been anywhere. That's a violation of my privacy. I would ask that the next time, if it ever happens again, to make an immediate call to Lori. And if she doesn't take care of it, bring it back to yeah. her. And we will. And I got something on this housekeeping thing. Now, I was inspected, which is fine. I expect that. <clears throat> In the 24 hours before they came over, the apartment was swept and mopped three times. My granddaughter spent two hours in the bathroom with a toothbrush scrubbing it. Guess what? My floor didn't pass and the bathroom didn't pass. You talk about... I have some community. guidelines I can provide on that. Apparently somebody's got OCD or something, and I'm a slob. Well, yeah, you're making time. my life oh. intolerable living there. Just, yeah, just ask for a clean apartment. It's intolerable. Yeah, and I got rolled up because somebody complained on the second floor, and I went on the third, about somebody bouncing a ball and playing music at 3.30 in the morning. My wife's on her damn deathbed, and I get rolled up because we're playing hacky sack on the second floor. What kind of garbage is that? So, so it wasn't you? No, it wasn't me. Of course not. Do I look like I'm playing ball downstairs? I, but it, it was rolled up, and that's that's just the way it is. So now I got that on my file. Well, I'm sure that they asked if it was you, right? That yeah. We, so did you hear it going on? Did you did know? After that happened, I heard it downstairs. Somebody bouncing a ball and playing music in the middle of the night. 
Did you let the staff know so they could? Why? Why bother? I get wrote up for something I had nothing to do with. Yeah, my recollection was when we met, I told James if it's not him, then don't worry about it. And but I, that I wrote, well, I'd have to look back in your file because it's been like a, almost a year ago that happened, yeah. I believe. So I had a complaint that there was noise coming. So when I have a complaint, I do investigate it. So I investigated. James said it's definitely not me. And I said, OK, sorry, it's not you. Thanks for coming in. So that was the end of it, I thought. And he, he said, no problem at the yeah. time. So he didn't get a violation. No, no, no it's all documented in his file that he talked to me and it's not him. Well, they come up with paperwork. As part of the investigation, when somebody makes a complaint, there's always paperwork. We have a file. Government wants all of things. So they write it up and kind of like he said no and she closed it. So there was no violation on your part. I should have been bothered. Something yeah. happens on the second floor has nothing to do with something on somebody that lives on the third floor. I agree. But didn't someone on the second floor think it was you? That's how it originated. They assumed that he was in 19 that complained. I was in 319, so it had to be me. Because you were right below. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the bouncing ball was in the hallway on the second floor. And this is the part of all of us living together. When people violate and do something like that, everybody else is paying the price, aren't they? You yes, know? they so, are. Apparently, so, it's me. Well, you know, I'm sure there's more than just you in this building that has felt this. And everybody's getting a little bit tired of those who want to continuously violate and break the rules and all the rest have to pay. So that's what's going on here. We're starting to say to people, you're all gonna be treated the same. If there's a complaint, we're gonna investigate. If you're breaking a rule, you're breaking a rule. If you don't keep your apartment clean, you either have to find a way to get it that way. It, 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 I'm not coming in, boy, if I came in, you would see OCD. Yeah. <laughs> but we're following the HUD rules. We're following those I, rules. I was told that I have to move all my stuff to the middle of the room and clean. You, yeah, I, I don't, I, it's just due to the bed bug situation. Oh, right, there's still units, which I don't have a list in front of me, but right. there are units where the exterminator does recommend, we're still dealing with roaches also, so it's not just bed bugs. But when we are dealing with roaches and bed bugs, they do ask the, the preparation for the treatments. They do ask them to pull things away from the wall so that they can do so a the proper treatment. A couple of things. One is that we need to talk to staff about being a little bit patient when you knock on somebody's door, give them a moment or two, do not just knock and walk. Okay, so first, we'll take a proactive approach to remind all of our staff about customer service give people time. I'm not one of those people that jumps right up and runs to the door. It takes me a moment to, so we'll take anyone. care of that. You may open the door and it goes straight out. Yeah, well, so I'll we have to be cautious about that. I think policy is that you don't enter a tenant's until they open the until they bite you in. Yeah. Unless it's for health or safety without at least a 24 hour notice. Oh, right. oh, oh, we do, but we still like when I do inspections, we knock, we wait, and then we holler, and then we wait till they say come in. But they were given a twenty. They were given a twenty-four hour. And I usually try and do it says reasonable, but I always try and do forty-eight hours. That we need to do just a good little extra customer service and wait a moment and give people time. The second piece of this is also another communication thing. You're thinking it's all about cleaning your apartment. I'm hearing that it's more about inspections for the bed bugs and the cockroaches. So they're two different things. So we need to be very clear with you. And some of the stuff we're saying to you, we're using acronyms, HUD, and blah, blah, blah. We're using all these words. And it may just sound like we're picking on you because your apartment isn't just right. No, we're, we're trying to do the bed bug thing. That's why things have to be moved to the middle. And we'll try to explain that as much as possible. Our explanations. And what you hear and what we say and what we say and what you hear back and forth, it, 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 it may not always jive. So 
we're asking for a little grace from your side. And if you don't understand, please tell us. And then we'll give a little grace on our side to be a little bit clear. Well, now I'm on a monthly inspection. You're welcome to go. I mean, the inspection. Well, if I sweep and mop my floor three times in 24 hours before they come in, how was that not good enough? So ref the other thing is referrals. So I don't know if that's commission on aging who I make those to, but I have been offering people when I do have to continually and you know um, repeat the inspections if they do not pass, if the unit is not found to pass, then are there other agencies? Is, is it commission on aging? Commission on aging for some people, you can talk to DHS for others. You know, there's if they, if people can afford, there's private, you know, type of stuff. The thing I would do is maybe <laughs> post a list of what the expectations are. I don't know if people see that. Sure. We, but, well, they were given it at the time of lease, but a lot of people have lived no, here a long time. I would time. have it posted somewhere where everybody could see it. This is how it's expected to be. Of the you 119 know? apartments in this facility, how many are you reinspecting for house? I don't have a list in front of me. Is it 10% or 20%? What would be your best guess? I would say, let me see here. So there's a hundred. Well, there's hundreds. Well, I just did, I believe, 25 reinspects of units that when we did the initial inspection back in December, the units were found in unacceptable condition. So I would say there's probably 25 units that were found unacceptable out of 167. Um, I think I have to go back to maybe five. That did not pass again. Yep. Out of 167 units, five did pass. So it's Gosh, not as if you're being a taskmaster. And the city had just contacted me. So I said, I'm actually, I just notified my residents, I'm coming if you want to come. But, you know, some of them he even wrote me up for. So he didn't, he wrote me up for these units being unsanitary. So that's the city who yeah. comes in it's and watches number. over us. And they say these apartments don't make sanitary conditions. And I have to respond back yeah. to him and prove to him that it's that they do pass. Well, they'll come back and reinspect. Oh, yeah. So okay. the, the long and short of this is that we all have different opinions on what is clean and what is sanitary. In our own households, I'm sure we're all very different. You know, what Even we're saying is that here is a listing of what the government, this is a government style housing. This is what the government says it has to be. And this is the, the this is the floor. Being above that's fine, but it's like, so I think posting that and having that and everybody, nobody can say they didn't see it. Nobody can say they didn't know it was happening. This is the expectation. You know, we're being watched just like you're being watched. You know, it would help tremendously if you had access to the dump seven days a week instead of there. Sometimes that we go six days on holidays and that, where you can't get rid of your trash from your apartment. Oh, that's I've got boxes and stuff that's got to go to the dumpster. My doctor tells me, due to my health, I can't walk more than 200 feet at one time. So I don't have the physical means to get it over there. You're forgetting you people that you've got a bunch of elderly handicapped people with all kinds of mental or physical and problems and that. And you expect them to be a bunch of 30 year olds jumping around doing handstands. Never meet those expect and expectations. And I have never forgotten who's in these facilities. So that's an assumption on your part. Is I understand. From what I'm that's what I'm getting. That's how you feel. What we're trying to do is change things around, make it more livable, and also recognize when there are difficulties, like you're saying, okay, we found a roadblock, something that's, you know, impairing your ability to kind of keep something clean. Perfect. Now we know how to work with you. Now we know. That's fine. Well, yeah, you know, like try that. to get an idea. But then there's some, you know, some residents like if they want us to put all the stuff in the middle, there's some, like Linda, okay, like the person, she's been here like 36 years. 
You know and they they've got they're trying to keep her apart and clean to keep her here. But then they're then and that's in the work. Well she needs help with the HHS yeah. or um council and aging. There are services available and um that people can pursue and we can get more information. We could have Lisa in the office dig up what's available in the Manistee area because you can have people paid for by social services or the housing commissioner or senior uh, senior uh, aging, program. yeah, or about that can program. come in and help people. Now the garbage thing is, yeah, if is do we? So we have the shoes in this okay. building. Yeah, um, it's a week. They're only there. The yeah. What are the hours on them? Okay. So here is a problem. Yeah. We need to go back. Yeah. We need to yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. So these, just to clarify, just so everybody knows, it's this is the independent living. Now, independent living means a bunch of different definitions. You may need assistance to live independently. We don't provide those. We don't provide those services as a housing provider of independent living. So, you know, and if. Somebody needs assistance. There is a dumpster across the way that you can use all the time. Plus, then during the week, the the garb the shoots here. Too. But also, Mark, if they tell us, like in this yeah. situation, we find out that you've got a bad back and you can't walk that far, whatever it is. Here's a problem. It's going to kind of affect us all. We can find some resources maybe yeah. to help this gentleman out and maybe solve that problem. Yeah. Plus, also there might be an issue with our garbage collection yep. thing. So we have to look at that too. We can't bring somebody in to help you, but we certainly can find resources to help you. But we have to know, like today, you let us know, this is why I'm not doing it. I've oh, already yeah. hired somebody. That's great. Uh, they don't start till next month. Okay. okay. We don't have the garbage containers outside doors anymore. No. Well, uh, no. And, and it's 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 view. Can all anyone who walks out of view. Trash over there, real amusing. Yeah, that is. Yeah. 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 some totes out here. Yeah, that is. That does feel a little. Oh, bit some like totes it. would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So this garbage collection system, it's it's a compactor, so it's got to be emptied when it gets full. So it doesn't. I think on the weekends. Correct. It doesn't. We. I believe so it's. How many people that are using the shoes really need to use the shoes, or how many people are using them because of convenience? So we would just have to get so the toads we'd have to find a good location for them. And then we have to get them to the city street before 7 30 yeah. Monday we morning. Well, we work at seven, people. So, so you can hire somebody from here in the building to be reliable to take the totes out to the street yeah. instead of having maintenance go do that. Well, I have parking this later than the entranceway in the <laughs> elevators. Oh, yeah. And there's leaves out front from last fall. The cleaning crew did not I've do said the job same thing. at all. The new cleaning crew? The new crew it's shitty. It's shitty. my French. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, I'm not that, yeah. We've got a box here. We can have a pit solid. floor. Or we're not every two weeks they have back the pictures haven't been dusted at all. Okay. Down here. Well, I mean I know that I know who the cleaning crew is and I know the owner uh, will want to hear this and if they want to keep the contract, they're gonna do better. And so that's what we need to know. Um, How many trash coaches get? They sticking too much trash in there. Where yeah. where's that? Are sorry? you talking about the inside cleaners or are you talking about the inside cleaners? cleaners? The inside cleaner. The, okay. The crew. And that's backing me for the darn on this floor at all. I heard okay. one time last week. I and haven't heard them in quite a while. Yeah, that's Kevin that. and I just did up a list to meet with the owner. So we're on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I do, I would like a recommendation on how many totes I should put out. Here. Okay. Next. I just want to say Lori was wonderful. She handled this great. She took the time to talk to me. She even gave me a lollipop because I was crying. <laughs> but I received a violation for smoking marijuana in my apartment over a rumor. That wasn't true. Somebody was going around saying I was dating this speedy guy that I can't stand. And 
I received a violation over it. So I, sh I went and got a text message from my nurse and had her show that all my uh, rate of drug tests from 2022 and 2023 were negative for THC. And they showed that to Lori. And then something clicked. The police had showed up my, at my house looking for him one night. And I kept telling them, no, he lives in 321. He lives below me. And they kept being like, are you sure he's not in there? He is the last person I would ever let in my house. I can't stand him. It's not fair that I got a violation over. But That's you don't sad. have one. But you didn't because we resolved all that. But yeah, so I, I don't go on rumors. I go on written complaints. So when someone writes up and they name actual apartments, I do, you know, I do send out letters. I meet with the people. If if it's not substantiated, then nothing goes in their file other than we discussed this and it was not this person. So definitely we do the investigation. So you don't have any violence. Same experience. But how do I, you know, I have to investigate. Yes, I do. When I get complaints, yeah. I'm investigating yeah. them. It has to follow yeah. up. But it's not in your file, so you're okay. I know, it just really hurts because I love my well, Right, and we want you, we like having you here too. I you, give people you you use a little common sense and some of this. Crying and upset over it. Well, again, everybody here has to live together. You know, I'm not saying you have to be best friends or buddies, but at least be. I I've been nothing but helpful other. to people in this building. You but, know how many people I picked up off the ground to help them get back to their apartment? However, on the bloody on the street where everybody else is sitting there doing a thing. Though you're doing that, not everybody's doing that. There are people who are being cruel and saying nasty things. And it's right. like the more that we kind of get up together and be kind and considerate and truthful and kind of like shut down people who are gossips and rumor mongrels, these type of things won't happen. But every time there's a complaint, we have to ask the questions. Well, I wasn't talking to you about it. If somebody would have asked me, I could have cleared it up before getting that paper. And you you know. did. <laughs> uh, it's a process again. You just gotta have to send. We have to go through these steps. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how it works. That was my yeah. question. Yeah. Somebody so made a complaint and you. saying, Jane, you ought to get rid of the people that are falsely accusing people of garbage. Well, I think we're probably talking to those people, hopefully. I mean, Oops. you know, it, it's it's not true and you shouldn't be saying that. But again, yeah. we're dealing with adults. You know, we're dealing with adults. Yeah, but some of them don't grow up. Well. Some of them don't want to listen. Some of them get angry. I mean, Lori puts up with so much more than you ever realized. She's amazing. Well, now, hey, uh, don't be saying that. Willie, really, you sit so on the fifth floor of that carpet. <laughs> you guys, you live up there. What happened to that carpet? It didn't put all wheel on there. Huh? There's spots on the carpet. Do you know how it happened? No. So I've heard, I've stuff. heard the roof is leaking again. Yeah, there's I someone spilled something, a dog pits or the roof that had leaked. It could be different reasons, but it's like you look down the hall. Oh, I know it's horrible. It's I like, like this is brand new. Like, what, 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 where is this? The carpet this is well, it's in. not the rough leaking. People didn't trip on it. Somebody was down here and the walls were wet. I'm sure they told that was you. Was. You were down here. And I don't remember who the person who I said it. I had to go somewhere. Is but I think they told him. That was back there. Any other public comments? We could spend all day here. Yes. John does back here. But um, I was I was wondering um, I got a package taken um, and I was wondering um, what 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 you do because I'm just, I have packages coming every month and they whoever took it. Went through my whole package. I didn't have my whole shipment. Um, you know, it, I, it, it got returned. Joan, was that the one they addressed it to the wrong apartment? Huh? Was that the one that came that was addressed to the wrong apartment? Yeah. So the 
Well, it was mailed to the wrong apartment. No, it was down I in the And it was it had the wrong apartment number. So it was taken. Someone was trying to be a good neighbor and took it to the apartment that it was addressed to. But that's not the person that lived there. So then she called us. We had to look on the cameras. We had to find out which apartment it went to. So by the time we did all that, it had been opened. Yeah, but that was not UBS bring it to the door. Yeah, when they should be. Well, in that particular it situation, it went to the wrong place anyways. It was the wrong address. I, so, I understand that. And Joni, is that the uh, packages that went to Penny? Um, we don't know who. We did post. Did you, did you see the new signs? And we did post to not be delivering packages for your neighbor. Just if everyone, if it's not your package, no. leave your hands Can off we it. Come in here and deliver to each apartment. Not always. Mm. UPS will do it. We got big packages. FedEx will do it to Hazel. FedEx sent me a text on the package that they delivered. I went downstairs to get it, and that kid Billy that he's around all the front all the time, he had it up, sitting under the bench by him. And, that, and he wouldn't give me my package back. We I had to take it away from this. Have, have you moved forward at all with UPS? And I'll put them in a central room. People have to come in and get them. Okay, we need to keep following up on that. What are you guys doing? What did you do in Big Rapids? My, my package was in the entryway. If they don't can't deliver it to the unit, then they bring it to the office. Typically. That's what I'm thinking. Unfortunately, it has to go to the office and be held there. Yeah. We'll have to notify people that the package arrived. That's fine. Well, we know where it's at. Now. At least it ain't locked up. It's not locked up. And I think yeah. sometimes they leave it next to the unit door, too. They, they We let them in. Of course, Actually, there's nobody. used to if you had a... Right. Like eight apartments in one building. We did that. If you weren't home, they we left a note on your did. door that they yeah, we, you had a package yeah. and they'll be back tomorrow to go over. I came back two weeks so I had a new bed right by my door. A new bed? I didn't get no pad or anything. I did on to the wait. They only do that if it's certified mail. Yeah. And you know, it's going to go with all of your things so, delivered. Uh, is that possible to have a secure spot or? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's not going to have to be tabled till we figure this key thing out too, or something. But um, if FedEx and UPS did their job, we wouldn't have that problem. But is, are they supposed to deliver all the way to the rooms? Is right that the room? Sometimes they leave it downstairs. Well, then I guess we need to talk to them. Well, okay. So if you're a FedEx driver and you have a package to deliver, so you show up at the front door. Um, if the resident has chose not to be on the list, then they're not going to know what number to punch in to call the resident to say, I'm here with your package. And then, so, but the people that are on the list, so, and it's not your apartment number, it's a separate number that doesn't match your apartment. So let's say your number is 156. So they could hit 156, it would call the room. There's a little phone in there. They pick it up on the FedEx. We push the number nine. The tenant would, and it would open the door, and the delivery man could come to their unit and give it to them. But that's only if the resident chooses to be on the list, or to give it to when you're ordering it. The door, right? Because you can put delivery instructions in your order. But so that would be so. But it's my understanding that the delivery people get in the building, and then they just leave it by the mailboxes. But then the other problem is if they have your telephone number, they usually call. Always. But they can't get through because they don't have voicemail set up. They put out a memo during COVID, please have your voicemail set up. I was doing yeah, for five camp. Every need, every need to do horizon point, yeah. every building in the city. And I got everybody's name and number. I go to call, don't have a voicemail no, set up. I, oh, no. I wonder if they we just talking with FedEx or UPS. Bring in their own drop box or drop area. Anybody ever heard you of that or seen that? Ask, but you know, I just don't see where that will. I mean, then we're talking keys and everybody's stuff goes in one place. Yeah. And, oh, there's stuff packed. Yeah, there's no good solution to this. I think the office is the drop off center. And if you get a package, we give you a call and you have to come pick it up. <laughs> or have somebody pick it up for you. 
That's the obvious. Jones still not, not done with her question. Okay. I have a I have a life impression machine coming in like three days. Very expensive. And they're very expensive. And if I and if I don't get that package, I'm gonna be you already gave me a warning. <laughs> you're not track. gonna be a happy camper. I'm not gonna be a happy camper. Yeah, you can track you can track your package online. Yeah, and to make sure they address it properly this time. Yeah. Well, and her package was damaged. The whole the whole side of it was caved in. They told me these packages were for penny. I didn't have my glasses. I said, well, where's she at? 125 or whatever. I went and got a card. I put that on there. Then, I, then the other one, the yours was all caved in. It could, it could fell off a truck, whatever you're missing. Well, that's what I've said to her. Because Penny, I don't think, I asked Penny. She didn't really give me an answer because she went into the office said she was coming back from Myers or something. But one was Penny's and the other one wasn't. We need to keep looking at this. You know, what we have now is not really acceptable. Okay, any other comments? Okay, um, announcements and upcoming meetings. Our next regular commission meeting will be Thursday, July 18th, 9 a.m. at Harbinville City. And now we need to go into closed session and discuss the union contract. Okay. We're going to go into the office. Hello, Richard. Because we have, we need a, Steve, we need a motion to go into closed session. Adjourn from the regular meeting to have a special meeting. Closed session. Closed session. Which includes all commissioners. I'm going to have some him. And then Tammy made coffee if anybody wants coffee. I'll second that. Second. So Nick no, and Jimmy. Oh, that's the question. Yeah, we got to go. Pardon me, Derek. Um, so I need to call the roll to go yeah. into okay. Commissioner Pelton. Yes. Yes, to go into closed session. Good. Commissioner Goodman. Yeah. Commissioner Szymanski. President Foskett. Yes. Okay, we're going to adjourn to the office room. Okay. No, right over, right over here, Steve. And up I've seen videos. Um, I think we're meeting later, so I'm not sure. It's the end of the day. Let's call you over there. You have to set up a glory. So, Steve, we're going to go back to the office, the central care the office there. I don't know. That was we will have to come back here real quick and adjourn. Also, I thought we did adjourn. No, we did adjourn. We can't we come back and stay here because we have to come back and adjourn. Oh, okay. Or maybe it's just me. We probably got somebody to make a motion to adjourn. That's the loop. Hey, Ben, will it So, up where he is, that's where he said it's two. No, it's two. It's just that it's two.